when the babies first uh, were born, they, um, from the head down to uh, below the diaphragm, everything was separate. Uh, but as we got closer to the hindgut, um, there was concern that there was um, uh, a sharing of the anal rectal canal. Later on, some of the additional studies as the babies were a little bit larger and robust, closer to the time of, of the uh, separation surgery, the, their physical exam and the studies were more informative because now they had better development of their uh, pelvic floor musculature. The goals and for these two babies, we certainly wanted to separate them and in a way such that we would minimize how we would compromise both of the children. And that was the most difficult part about separating conjoined twins. And so we chose to go ahead and keep the anal rectal mechanism. So the, the whole and the whole circumference of that hole for one baby so that it will work as well as it possibly could work. And, um, and we um, kept that with Joshua. And then we were able to go back and find muscle to put around the rectum for Jacob and make him a, a new uh, anus. Because of all the planning that we did, because of the leadership that we had, and because really everybody in that in, in the hospital that day was certainly committed to getting this done and getting this done just as wonderfully as and, and uh, perfectly as we possibly can. So they are doing beautifully. Um, both of their legs move spontaneously, which was, um, it, it was just, it's wonderful to see because we're very concerned preoperatively that that was not going to happen. Um, and we will just have to see as time goes by what that means for them in terms of their function. To be able to go into both Joshua and Jacob's room afterwards, see all the pic beautiful pictures that are on the wall and see the smile on mom's face is, is worth um, more than really anything else. So.